Jim Messina on how they built Poco. I'm John Bowden from Rock History Music. Jim Messina helped create the band Poco with his Buffalo Springfield cohort, Richie Fiore, and a guest musician on that last Buffalo Springfield album, Rusty Young. The band was sort of a clear reaction to Buffalo Springfield ending and the drama behind it and the need to continue some semblance of that music. Remember, this was the beginning of that West Coast country rock feel. I asked Jim Messina about forming Poco. On one of my videos, I introduced the videos of going, you know, it kind of seemed like Poco was sort of a farm team for the Eagles. Well, I learned not to say that out loud. Right. Bring me back to starting a band like that, coming out of Buffalo Springfield. How Was that an easy band to get on record, to get signed? Was there a lot of interest in the beginning with that first album? Well, let's take your first question. Um, was it an easy band to put together? Um, no. It, it required a lot of thought and, you know, personality wise. Uh, at the time, see, I was playing bass in the Springfield and I, I wanted to play guitar again. Mm -hmm. So when we went back to Poco, I was going to play guitar and we we're going to find a bass player. So I think between, once we got Rusty involved, Rusty, I found out subsequent, knew Randy Meister from the days in Colorado because I guess Randy used to come out from Kansas or Nebraska, excuse me, and do some dates uh, in Colorado. So they knew each other. So somehow Randy's name got up, but Rick Nelson had a group called the um, Stone Canyon Band. And Randy was playing with that group, and somehow we asked him to come. And so, you know, it was sort of like, okay, well, I'll come visit. And we play a little bit. Oh, well, Randy's going to be great, and he'll sing good, but ooh, he can do the high part. And, and then let's see, well, we got – George can do the real high parts. Well, we got three singers now. We've got the steel guitar player. Um, we got a bass. Now you can go back to playing guitar, Jimmy. Okay, great. So as the producer, now finally on my own instrument, that was great. But that took about six months, eight months. Now, the band signed their record deal on December the 5th, 1968. Buffalo Springfield, I think, finished in April of 68, right? That was their last concert. I'm going to check my history somewhere around there. So somewhere between April and December the 5th, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, eight months, that's pretty close, um, is what it took to get that band organized and put together. And there were quite a few things that happened that, um, that uh, you know, were a little disastrous in the midst of that. We had, uh, Richie really chose the wrong manager to, to manage us. Uh, Dick Davis, sweet guy, hardworking, was our, was our um was our one of our roadies but he's his personality didn't really work well with the the Ahmed Erdogan's and the Jerry Mosses and so there was clashing and that we, we had issues there uh whether he was right or wrong or they were right or wrong it's hard to know but usually a good diplomat is a good diplomat yeah, and, uh, yeah. We, there wasn't much diplomacy I think in the, how he went about his business right or wrong so we had a lot of problems there, and eventually, Atlantic didn't work for us, uh, A&M didn't work with us, but CBS at that time did, and Epic Records was eventually the act that signed us. Well, we had Clive Davis, we had uh, Jerry Moss, and we had other record companies all at the same time, at the same place at the Troubadour, which is how we got signed. We invited them all and figured, you know, Maybe we'll just let let them plumb pick what they want, <clears throat> and that's how we really got signed. Uh, but the group was hot, the band was hot, the, the audience loved it. Um, it was a great group of players um, and a great group of personalities. I mean, when you look at Randy, uh, myself, and Richie, and of course Rusty and George. George is the quiet one, which somebody has to have be the quiet one in the band, and he was the one. Uh, it was just a great chemistry. That eventually, you know, once you start pulling that chemistry out, not that the bands are lesser or greater, but sometimes it, you don't get back to where you were. And, and Poco just never really got back to where it was. And it never could because it, it was five guys who were totally different in terms of where they were coming from and their creativity and their playing styles. I mean, Paul Cotton is a dear friend, uh, and I love him. He replaced me in Poco. But his style was just different. It was more bluesy and 
more distorted and um, his voice was better than mine, but different. Uh, you just couldn't get those harmonies again uh, or the messaging coming from the soul about the lyric. And, and uh, it's just uh, art is art. If it was easy, more people would be doing it, I guess. Yeah. A few years ago, I had a chance to talk to a founding member of both Poco and the Eagles, the great Randy Meisner. And he talked about the drama of recording that one album with Poco. He did come back for reunions, but he was on the very first Poco album. And he says one of the reasons he left is he wasn't even allowed to listen to the tapes being mixed. I did that first album with him, right. uh, picking up the pieces. And then uh, there was a thing where Richie and I, Richie Fure, he, uh, there were, we made the album, and then I called in, and it, you know, I said, well, I want to come down and listen to the mixes. And Richie, for some reason, they thought that him and Jimmy Messina should just do it alone. And I said, well, if that's the way it's going to be, I said, I don't feel like a member of the band. Richie said, okay, so you can quit kind of thing. So then I left. <laughs> it was just simple as that. Well, I think that's exactly what happened. And I don't know really what, I was in the studio that day when the evening when it happened. And what uh, what I had asked the guys to do is please don't bring friends around in here while I'm trying to mix because it's distracting. And it was a very small studio, we were at CBS. So, um, and I think Richie and I were there that evening and it was just the two of us. And somebody came up to the door. I don't know who it was. I'm focused on mixing and working. And apparently that incident happened between Richie and uh, and Randy and why Richie wouldn't let him in I have no idea why not yeah. unless he had a whole gang of people with him I, which I don't think he did uh, not from my recollection but again bad choices uh, that that was not that was not in, in today's terms an appropriate thing to do <laughs> not put one of your own guys in Jim Messina is doing shows throughout the year. Go to jimmessina.com. We'll have more of our conversation with Messina coming up next week. Make sure you comment on our video, subscribe to our channel, and share our videos. I'm John Bowden. This is Rock History Music. Mm -hmm.